Hi, Joel MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, the fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook, plus designer of quality medical kits for the family medic at store.doomandbloom.net. For many years, I've done videos on medical preparedness, telling you how to deal with injuries and infections and even dental issues in grid down situations. But it's been a long time since I've made a video that answered the question I often get in person. Why bother? Well, why bother indeed? Well, I'll tell you, in recent years, we've struggled to exist in a world where violence in the streets, mass shootings and outbreaks of pandemic disease are part and parcel of living in a so-called civilized, but in reality, very uncivil society, one that might be circling the drain. For the better part of a century, we have taken for granted the almost immediate availability of highly trained medical personnel to deal with emergencies. These providers arrive within minutes in vehicles carrying the best equipment modern times can offer. We can even expect a rescue helicopter to arrive over the horizon whenever we call it. This kind of access to modern medical care is both a reality and really, if you think about it, it's a miracle. And that's one that our ancestors would have considered nothing short of magic. Now, there are exceptions, of course. Certainly, modern medical care isn't readily available on a remote homestead or an ocean voyage or a wilderness hike. You can probably even say the same of urban areas in some underdeveloped countries. There are reasonable medical strategies, however, for these scenarios that are widely published. In addition, an entire medical education system exists to deal with limited wilderness or disaster situations, and it's served by an entire industry of supplies and equipment. Now, despite all the support, the reality is that a medical emergency rarely happens in front of doctors, nurses, or other trained personnel. More often, it's a family member or a bystander who, with rapid action, makes the difference between life and death. You may not have considered this a possibility, but you know what? It happens every day with motor vehicle accidents, heart attacks, industrial mishaps, falls, all sorts of issues. In disaster or epidemic scenarios, the situation is even worse. Due to multiple casualties, the medical system might be overwhelmed and understaffed. That's what's happened in many areas during the COVID pandemic. You may find that there's no higher medical resource available than yourself. And to be effective, a change of mindset is going to be required. Let's consider your goals when an emergency occurs. We'll even use the standard objectives of wilderness or disaster medicine. They involve rapid evaluation of injured or ill individuals, stabilizing them, and transporting them to the nearest modern medical facility. Now that makes sense, right? After all, you're not a doctor or a paramedic. Somewhere there are facilities that have a lot more technology than you have in your backpack. Your priority is to get patients out of immediate danger and then ship them off to others with the skills and materials to treat them. This strategy benefits everybody. The patient gets better care and you can continue on your wilderness adventure or at least increase your chances of surviving the disaster in question. Transporting the injured person might be difficult to do, sometimes really difficult, but you still have the luxury of being able to pass the buck to those who have more knowledge, technology, and supplies. Now, one day, however, there may come a time when a pandemic, civil unrest, or terrorist attack may lead to a situation where the miracle of modern medicine might be unavailable. Indeed, not just unavailable, but a situation so extreme that even the potential for eventual access to modern facilities no longer exists, period. That means you're responsible, you are responsible for that person's recovery from beginning to end. Are you ready? When the infrastructure collapses, you're gonna have a lot more risk for illness and injury, yet a lot less hope for rescue. It's not just the aftermath of a hurricane or tornado where your access to power and modern technology is delayed for a few days. Help is not coming at all. You, the average citizen, have become the point where the buck stops. Now, just mentioning this was once considered paranoia, but catastrophes like pandemics, Mass civil unrest, natural disasters, they're a reality rather than a rarity. You need the knowledge and supplies to be an asset in troubled times. It's not all beans and bullets, it's bandages as well. Want to keep it together even when everything else falls apart? Theodore Roosevelt once said, Do what you can with what you have 
where you are. Smart guy, that Teddy Roosevelt. You can be a medical asset to your family. Get off your duff and start learning. And more of this in future videos. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hi, Nurse Amy here. Just wanted to remind you guys not to forget to visit store.doomandbloom.net for all your holiday shopping, gifts for birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, any day actually. If you want to help somebody survive a first aid issue, make sure you go to store.doomandbloom.net.